Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I think it's always appropriate to get your poetic license on every once in a while. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poetic License. I think even if you couldn't stand poetry or reading or anything, you'd think this is a great, great bookstore and air conditioned. Yeah. It's approaching 100 degrees and it's October. What? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I, I can't wait till winter gets down, gets here, and it's like only in the high 80s. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Um, I'm going to say the list once really, really quickly so that you guys hear it. I'll try to remember to say next poet up or something so everybody knows, but I've got on the list Tom, Charles, Chris, Joanna, Ed, Linda, and Lydia. And Lydia, if I can catch my breath long enough. And if anybody wants to sit for anything, I've got a chair, I've got tables. Actually, I've got chairs and tables. I just did pluralize the wrong things. If somebody needs anything to read from, we've got a little music sheet thing for everybody if you need anything like that. And I thought I'd start by reading a poem for you. Just one, and it is from a new book release from Scars Publication. Literary magazines I do is through them. For those who do not know, I've decided to write a poem for every day of the year. And when you're doing this, you're thinking, I've got to come up with something. Is there any sort of weird holiday or something? And so you look for these things. And I had so many, and some of them were older, that it was suggested to me to put it into two volumes. So for the first half of 2019, I had worked on this book that's called Every Event of the Year, Volume 1, January through June. The Vegetarian has a nice leather look cover, which is really funny to me. But what are you gonna do? <laughs> and so I thought I would read a poem from oh, yeah. this book for you to start off the evening before I call up my first poet, Tom. And the poem for you is, was for columnist day, which I believe was April 18th, but it's all in the table of contents. You can check it out when you buy yourself a copy. <laughs> this is called Newspaper Inks, The Blood of a Dying Species. Sitting in those basement labs, the hum of computer workstations accompanied my thoughts. Time was ticking, deadlines darted, and I was used to that daily deadline. The rush to be on time was my nicotine. I'd slam my hands, my fingers into the keyboard so that every newspaper would know my side of the story. I would keep copies of my work in nine-point type, two inches wide in columns, but, but newspaper pages are like tissue. I can't hold on to this in this form forever, and not like this, and the ink smudges and disappears when everyone actually touches the page. Maybe this is the disintegration of the written word, now that everyone prefers reading their news from their phones and tablets. Besides, they want to read on their commute train rides to work. Newspaper ink could get smudges onto their crisp white shirts. Journalism is a dying art. Millenniums think, millennials think that using your smartphone and texting what anyone blurts out is actually news. And so they post their nonsense on every electronic medium they can find. And besides, when the price that, with the price that they pay for their phones now, and it's so that you can get Google to answer every question they ever have, so they don't have to retain any answers, texting and data better be free. <laughs> not like those newspapers, not the tabloid ones, but the ones you have to spread your arms out to read. You know, the cumbersome ones. I love those cumbersome ones, I'm sorry. <laughs> They're the best, I'm sorry. <laughs> the ones that make you feel like you have something worth saying because it's something of value. But this is what I loved. I loved being able to make a statement on a printed page and have it delivered to the town's front doors. I'd open my door and I'd open my daily newspaper, one just like the one delivered to every other front door, to open the pages wide and then find what's mine. Why bother remembering a story or the news when you can just reference it in an archive online? Well, you may be right. It may seem convenient, but it's inconvenient to search for the stories in the first place. And anyway, I still contend that it's better for your eyes and maybe your brains, because you can retain information on a page. I know, I know, the newspaper's a dying species. It's a dying art. But the oils, the pigments that make the ink, they are our blood. Understand this. 
And if you ever grab a newspaper again, if any of that ink smudges onto your fingers, well, rub it in. Let it get into your bones, because this stuff is in our blood, and it gives us life.